Um, so my name is David McClure from SBD, um, and the first region I want to look at is Europe. And the hottest topic there at the minute for telematics is e-call, and trying to understand what is the EC's objectives for e-call, will the car manufacturers have to fit e-call in the future, and what does it mean for offering other telematics services. So the, the EC initially, well, I say initially, maybe for the last seven or eight years, the EC has been trying to encourage the car manufacturers and the network operators and the governments across Europe to offer e-call on, on all vehicles. And their original target was that e-call would be available from 2009. And they tried to do this by encouraging a kind of voluntary agreement where everybody would voluntarily agree to, de to develop what was necessary for e-call. But both on the industry side and on the country side, pro progress has been very, very slow. And so far there is no concrete plan to launch uh, any kind of public e-call service. So the EC is now talking very strongly about introducing legislation that would mandate the fitment of e-call to vehicles. They have not been very precise in when exactly this could happen, but in this chart we're trying to use our experience and our analysis of the European market to try to make some kind of prediction for when, if and when, public e-call might be required in Europe. And the building block for public e-call is the standards that will be required to get the data out of the car and to the PSOPs. And the standards have been developed by SEM, the European Standardization Body. Some of them are near in completion, some will be finished next year, but the basic standards for public e-call should be finished by the end of this year. Then the EC has to try to, to get enough support internally to mandate the car manufacturers to fit e-call, to mandate the network operators to do what is required, and to mandate the countries to implement um, the receiving technology at the PSAPs to get the location data from the vehicle. So we think that the earliest that this could happen could be around Q2, Q3 of 2010. And from a timing point of view, usually when, when any new technology is mandated for vehicle fitment, there is a three-year period between when the regulation is passed and when it must be fitted into vehicles. So our image is that the earliest introduction timing of e-call, mandatory e-call, could be around 2013, end of 2013. But the, the shape of this graph is meant to show the increasing probability that e-call will be introduced. So we feel quite positive or quite sure that e-call will happen at some stage, but the question which we are trying to answer at the minute is when will it happen, because the EC has not issued any kind of concrete plan so far. So I, I've mentioned public e-call a couple of times. Um, the opposite, or the alternative to public e-call is private e-call. Just very quickly, public e-call means that, um, or the technology that has been selected is data over voice using in-band modem from the vehicle directly to the PSAP. So there is no telematic service provider involved in delivering this service. The alternative is a private e-call, probably using SMS technology and using a third party telematic service provider. Some of the questions which still have to be answered is if the EC mandates the car manufacturers and the countries to develop public e-call, but some countries don't have the infrastructure in place before the deadline, could there be any requirement on the vehicle manufacturers to implement a private e-call service in countries where there is no public service? So for example, there could be a public service in UK, France, Italy, Spain, but there may be no public service at the, at the launch date in Sweden, Norway, Denmark. So the question is, could the car manufacturers be forced to implement a, pub, a private service to cover the gaps in the coverage of public e-call. This would 
potentially add a lot of cost to the development of e-call for the vehicle manufacturers because they would have to have call centres, SIM cards in the car, telematic service provider. And it goes against the, the real policy or the push of public e-call, which is to try to bring down the cost as much as possible. So across the automotive industry, there's a lot of different opinions from the vehicle manufacturers in Europe. And I've tried to summarize this uh, in the chart. And on the left-hand side, you see the, the, the red arrow. And this is showing some of the vehicle manufacturers who don't currently have e-call are lobbying very strongly to argue against the mandatory fitment of e-call. And typically, these are the German vehicle, some of the German vehicle manufacturers are pushing very strongly against the EC because they do not want to be required to fit mandatory e-call. On the other side, in the green arrow, we've got vehicle manufacturers with existing services such as BMW, Volvo, Fiat, PSA. And I guess they, they are a little bit neutral to the legislation discussion because they have their services and it's relatively easy for them to increase the coverage or to adopt a public e-call solution if it's available. And then down at the bottom we have maybe the, the vehicle manufacturers who have no plans to do e-call and they will only do it at the very last minute if it's, if it's mandated. So these are the, the laggards, they will be the last ones who do the minimum necessary to meet the mandatory requirements. So one of the problems I think that eCall has is that there are so many different opinions, it's very hard to reach any kind of voluntary agreement. And this is one of the reasons why the EC hasn't been able to reach a voluntary agreement with industry and with the countries across Europe. 